Broadcasting live from the KSHP studios in the heart of Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time to get on the right side of sports betting. It's time for the Odds Couple. Welcome to the Odds Couple. My name is Scott Pritchard. I'm a professional sports better handicapper. I'm joined, as always, Monday through Thursday, 10A to 11A. Brett Grant, happy Thursday. Hey, Scott, how you doing? I'm doing great. Let's get started with What Say You? NBA playoffs, exciting games last night. The Houston Rockets look good. Big game. I mean, they were. we mentioned yesterday that we liked the Rockets plus the 8.5. During the course of the show, the line moved to 9, a touch of 9.5. It's important to know which way the money is going. FTM, follow the money in business. It also applies to professional sports betting. But the important thing is why is or was the number moving? And the money was coming in on Oklahoma City yesterday simply because it came out that James Harden, the star for the Houston Rockets, had an illness and he may or may not play. Ultimately, he went on to play, played extremely well, 7-for-7 seven seven at one time from the three-point line. But we like the Rockets plus the points. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Easy winner, straight up winner. It was, and that's one of the conversations we talked about yesterday. If you have a an underdog put a little bit on the money line as well, and that underdog goes out and wins straight up. That was a pretty big money line play if somebody took the Rockets with, what, plus probably plus 450 or so in the game yesterday? It's a good observation because, again, it ultimately always comes down to shopping, getting value. I know that the money line, the cheapest money line on the Thunder, instead of laying eight, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, you could could have laid 470 in the islands, as an example. And in Las Vegas, I, I know at Coast Properties, it closed, the take back was plus 450. Right. So the idea is to offset the vig, the juice, the rub as much as you possibly can. And we're used to a 20 cent line in football, minus 10 cents either way on a three point line. But in a money line, with, when it's a big fat number like that, right. minus 470, the cheapest in the islands on the Thunder, and plus 450, the best take back in Vegas at Coast Properties. So again, all I cannot stress this enough. You have to shop for numbers. You might not think a half point, point, point and a half, the best of it is significant, but long term, three to five bets per day times seven days a week times 365 days out of the year, you save yourself a lot of money. And we, you know, back to the game real quick. I mean, James Harden, you mentioned for being sick, he should play like that all the time. He should be ill all the time, or at least a little bit under the weather. He was fantastic yesterday. Amazing 7-for-7 seven seven from the three-point line, 31 points for the game. James Harden brought it, but I thought Kevin McHale had his team well-prepared. It's not easy. I mean, even without Russell Westbrook, the Thunder, a very talented team and they just do not they refuse to lose at home but I thought defensively the game plan was pretty good for Houston I mean they had Kevin Durant fronted as soon as he crossed half court yeah let I mean Durant's still gonna get his points still at 36 in the game and and you're forcing other guys to go out and beat you and the interesting thing and oh the irony I guess is that James Harden the guy you traded away to Houston might be the one that bites you in the butt but not so much Harden as the guy you got back in the trade, biting your his own team in the butt in Kevin Martin, who couldn't make a shot yesterday. Yeah, Kevin Martin started out 0 for 9, and again, I thought it would be an opportunity for the for Kevin Martin to showcase his game, his skills. I mean, he was a pretty decent player for the Sacramento Kings a few years ago. They got rid of James Harden. They bring in Kevin Martin, which is not a bad, bad deal, but again, a time for him to step up and maybe have the OKC fans forget James Harden right. instead he went 0 for 9 finished 1 for 10 he finally made a shot said okay I'm done I'm done shooting for the night <laughs> he should have been done after his 0 for 1 no doubt <laughs> no doubt again you never bet on a streak right. to end 0 for 1 beats 0 for 9 that's for you there you go now the interesting thing is you know without Russell Westbrook in the series you know I think Reggie Jackson's done a pretty decent job he had 20 points last night played pretty well I mean you you know how many how many more points in a game, is Russell Westbrook going to give you than what Jackson gave you last night? So it's almost inexplicable that this team lost a game at home. And now you got to think, boy, this is going to be a number one seed probably being stretched to seven games, potentially. I would agree. I think chances are it is going to go seven. I certainly expect the Thunder will win at home in game seven, knowing that they'll be favored from anywhere from seven and a half to nine, nine and a half points. But fact is, one game at a time, game six in Houston and the Rockets, let us not forget, they're down 3-2, but they're an eyelash away from being up 3-2 right. because two games ago in Houston they led 
or actually two three games, but they led in the last uh, minute of the game before Durant hit uh, a right. crazy three point shot. So fine line between winning and losing. But the fact is, the Thunder had a chance to close out the Rockets, and at this time of year, ask the San Antonio Spurs if you can oust the opponent, do so because rest is so so critically important. Chances are this series now the Rockets Thunder going to go the distance and one more game increases the likelihood of an unforeseen injury fatigue sets in and then wham bam if you come out alive an emotionally hard fought seven game series no time to recover you have to turn right around and play the winner of the Memphis Clipper series which I think is going to be Memphis well the interesting thing is I've never seen this happen before but the Heat and Spurs are both enjoying a seven day Caribbean cruise during the middle of the playoffs isn't that crazy uh, they get the whole week <laughs> off they're like honey let's go on our cru-. They're, they're, they're cruising together I, it, the, the schedule is crazy these guys haven't played since the weekend and they're still not going to play until early next week because we're going to have game sevens in a couple of different series on the weekend so when is game one of the divisional or the uh, the semifinals going to start it won't be till tuesday or wednesday of next week and that'll be a good nine days off ten days off for both the heat and the spurs well in the western conference you have the spurs they've been off since sunday their last game and they need the rest with the one exception manu ginobili has said hey man i need to play i just got back right yeah so he needs to play but everyone else i mean parker and duncan right. and diao and these guys they they welcome the rest so what's interesting here is you have the warriors taking on the nuggets tonight and if if the Nuggets win then they force a game seven Saturday game one of the Western Conference semis between the Spurs and I'm hoping it'll be the the Nuggets Nuggets. that will be uh, that (laughs) will be Monday Oh, it will be Monday. Monday okay. would be game one and even if the Warriors who are a small favorite much to my dismay because that means I have to shave my head (laughs) if the Warriors should happen to win tonight at home and we're going to talk in depth about that contest a little bit later on in the show but the idea is some extra looks in the mirror I am I'm I'm, I've just got again morning and night all I do now stare in the mirror no I just comb my hair (laughs) nonstop. I, I, you never uh, take things for granted so (laughs) but yeah tonight I've canceled all plans I'm going to... Uh, Clippers are standing by and not the Los Angeles <laughs> Clippers. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So tonight I'm going to be at home, peace and quiet, confined, watching the Warriors take on the Nuggets. Are you going to watch your death? I, I Yeah, it's going to be a slow, agonizing death right. if the Warriors should happen to win this game. And, and it's interesting because the first two games in Golden State, the Nuggets were a small favorite, one, one and a half, two. And now, yesterday, last night, it actually opened. Nuggets favored by one, one and a half. The early money has come in on... Golden State to where the Warriors are now minus one, minus one and a half, and that's because they're just so, so tough at home. But like I say, we'll talk a little bit more about this game a little bit later, but the idea is game one, Western Conference semis, San Antonio Spurs at home Monday. Even if the Nuggets lose tonight, game one would not be until Monday, so it would actually bode well for the Warriors. First of all, please understand, everyone knows I have a big fat future on the Spurs. I've been saying this for the last two and a half months, plus 250 on the Spurs to win the West. Caught a big fat break when Russell Westbrook went down, but the idea is these two teams, the Thunder and the Spurs evenly matched throughout the course of the regular season, would have been an absolute war, but without their second best player I'm not, A, I'm not convinced the Thunder will get there, and if they do, even though they have home court, I love the Spurs' chances because the Spurs were banged up and hurt the entire year, and they still finished within one or two games of Oklahoma City Right, let's go talk about the other two games from yesterday, another team that was up three games to nothing, another very high seed in the New York Knickerbockers, and the Knicks have now lost two in a row to the Boston Celtics, Celtics go in and win at Madison Square Garden, and now Game 6 back at Boston Garden. And is that a series that now you think is going to go seven games as well? Well, it's interesting because Game 6, Celtics at home against the Knicks. I mean, you just don't let teams hang around. And Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks, I mean, they've been playing some really good basketball. But the Celtics, I I love. I mean, I, I always felt that Doc Rivers was overrated as a coach, and I was wrong, because this guy was a very good, uh, a, a decent basketball player, but a media darling, and he's a nice guy. I've been around Doc Rivers. He's likable, mm-hmm. and but more than anything else, he was a media darling. Uh, everyone loved this guy, but he had zero coaching experience, but then the fact that he led the Celtics to the NBA championship, and so obviously I'll give credit where credit is due, but he has this team playing well. They've been banged up. Rondo has been out 
for quite some time. So I give the critics, uh, the uh, Celtics, a lot of credit uh, credit here, but I'm surprised that the Knicks just haven't flat out put them away. No, I am too. And, and you know, the Knicks to me though have not been a team that I was I have personally been impressed with. I think Carmelo Anthony is a ball stopper. If you if the ball goes to Carmelo Anthony, the other four guys on the floor have nothing else to do because he doesn't pass the ball. Uh, there was a couple of possessions yesterday that they highlighted in the first half where Anthony literally had the ball for 20 seconds of a 24-second shot clock and, and took a bad shot and never passed the ball anywhere else. If he's going to play that way, I'll take my chances with the Celtics, who are a very unselfish team, and they're a gritty team, the Celtics are. They're hard they have a heart of a champion. They, they are a team that has been through these battles before, and they know that, yes, we're down to our last breath, but, boy, uh, you're going to have to really kill us to be able to knock us out of this thing. We're not going to beat ourselves. They had four guys last night in, the, in, the, in double – actually, five guys last night that, averaged, that scored between 16 and 18 points, five guys. So they were all basically in the same spot, from Jason Terry to Jeff Green to Brandon Bass and, of course, Pierce and Garnett. Uh, doing what they do, and if you look at the box score on the on the Knicks side, you know Carmelo Anthony with his with what he was doing yesterday, eight of twenty four uh, in the game. That's too many shots if you're not hitting at a decent percentage. You can't go in and make thirty three percent of your shots and shoot twenty four times. You could do it if you shoot ten times, I guess, and go three of ten or four of ten, something like that. But uh, there's other guys on the floor that can score, and Anthony's just a ball stopper to me. It's a nice way of calling him a ball hog. Right, right. Yeah. And, and again, I don't think that's anything new. I mean, no. you take the good with the bad with Anthony. The guy is a tremendous offensive scorer and player. But, yeah, it's it's pretty much, you know, <laughs> you, you hate playing with guys like that oh, yeah. because you stop moving, you stop setting right. picks. It's like, why am I busting tail when this guy is going to exactly. gun from 25 right. feet out regardless? I, I completely agree with you. And we've all played with those guys no matter what the sport is. There's always somebody going, <laughs> I'm just going to stay over here. Right. Yeah, and I think I think J.R. Smith was you know he was yapping. He, he you know talk about a selfish guy. He wins the Sixth Man of the Year award. He throws that terrible elbow, gets suspended for a game. They lose, and of course they ask him, "Would you guys have won if you played?" Of course we would have won if I played. Well, he played last night. He was three of fourteen, and they lost again. So now, if you're a Nick, let me ask you from a psyche of the Knicks. How nervous are you that this series might be slipping away from them? Shouldn't be nervous at all. If you're a documented, proven winner, C and C, baby, confidence and concentration. Is it baby or Brett, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> call me whatever you need to C call me. C and C, baby. It's confidence <laughs> and concentration. So the Knicks are being chased. They are not. So I, I think they should know who they are. I don't think they should be nervous at all. They just need to take care of business. Well, but they're also in a little bit of an unfamiliar territory themselves, having not had a lot of postseason success recently, these Knicks. But you're playing the Boston Celtics. Right. Not the Larry Bird Celtics. We're talking the current Boston Celtics, and who are not at 100%. That's true. You're, you are playing, though, the relics of the Celtics that were world champions. They're still Pierce. You have Garnett. a couple of, yeah, and, and those guys, they are, and they're warriors, and, and right. I... Oh, man, I got Warriors on the mind for some <laughs> reason. <laughs> they are proven. I mean, I love Kevin oh, Garnett. Oh, Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to back up just for a second because I, before I came into the studio today, I was reading about how Royce White, the basket case from the Houston Rockets, this guy called out Kevin Durant via Twitter, dogging yeah. him. And it's like, really? A guy who's afraid to get on a plane? You're going to call out someone's manhood? Really, Are you he's, serious? He's a John Madden guy? He won't get on a plane? Yeah, he won't get on a plane. Royce White, Iowa State Cyclone product. Right. It's been a debacle the entire year. The guy has game, but they demoted him down to the D League, and again, he had trouble. He wouldn't fly. And so it's sabotaging his career, but he's the first guy to sit on the couch at home and call out Kevin Durant. <laughs> what did he say? I didn't see this. Well, he was just saying that, hey, look out, here come the Rockets, you know. I mean, obviously you're, you're – he was just basically throwing him under the bus, knocking a guy while he was down. And Kevin Durant, I mean, he does what he does. I mean, he can't do it by himself. But you're seeing where a two-headed monster, Westbrook and Durant, way more effective sure. than just a one-headed monster. But the other thing is, let us not forget the Houston Rockets – Hey, it's 3-2, Thunder, going to Houston now. Lynn did not play again. So, I mean, they're playing without one of their stars. That's a good point. And if he's able to get back in that lineup, uh, you've got to think that's going to be a huge boost for the Rockets. 
uh, in Game 6 and, and in Game 7. And let's face I mean, Kevin Durant's still averaging 32, 33 points a game in the series. It's not like suddenly without Westbrook in there that Durant's scoring 12 points a game. He's scoring more than he was doing. So, And that's with him getting all of the attention of the defense. As you mentioned, being fronted, being double teamed, being uh, greeted at half court. Uh, he's still getting his shots. He's still scoring from the foul line. Uh, and, the, and the final game yesterday was the uh, Indiana Pacers game five, critical spot for them at home against the Atlanta Hawks. And, and they absolutely, the Pacers, 106-83 again, destroyed the Hawks at home. We've been talking about this on the odds couple on a daily basis about what a fraud the Atlanta Hawks are. I mean, first of all, let me just remind you that the odds couple is broadcast live Monday through Friday, 10A to 11A, Las Vegas time. This is KSHP AM 1400 radio, live and worldwide on Vegas Video Network. My name is Scott Pritchard. I'm a professional sports better featured on VegasInsider.com, my site, Pritchard's Picks. Dot com and Tim Donahue, former NBA official. I'm one of the premier handicappers on his site, refpicks.com. Do we have a caller? We do. We do. We have uh, a, a gentleman known as Anthony Scissorhands who is checking in. <laughs> Hi, Anthony. How I've you got doing? The Clipper, man, I've got the Clippers warmed up and ready to go. I've been oiling them this morning, doing them at different, uh, tightening them different, at different uh, levels. Scott, I am ready, man. I, I do want to remind our listeners and our viewers, Anthony Padilla, my good buddy, the original anchor, co-host of this show back when we started in September of last year of The Odds Couple. Anthony will be by to visit us uh, each and every Friday. He'll be here tomorrow again from 10 to 11. Great having you with us, Anthony. You know, one thing, I, I do want to remind our listeners and viewers, we have a friendly wager. I, I've gone on record all week as saying Anthony constantly says outrageous things, and the most annoying part is you're almost always right. So he I, brought I, up I can't the man. Yeah, well, I mean, he mentioned before the series started, number six, Golden State, would beat number three, Denver. And I thought, ah, oh, it's just another outrageous thing that you say that's probably true. But I said, listen, I don't think they have any shot. You said, will you shave your head if the Warriors win? I said, yes. But I don't know if everyone knows you have manned up. And if my Nuggets knock off your Warriors, you are going to go with what? Uh, I agreed that I would, I would dye my hair. So yeah, you're going to follow my lead and go with some highlights. Does that mean you're going to put on about 85 pounds too? <laughs> well, I, I don't think I don't think that's going to help the head situation. My head will never be that big, regardless of how much weight I put on everywhere else. But I'm still going to. And actually, I don't even know if I'm going to dye it blonde. I think I'm going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to go halfway between what you've done and to support Jeremy's mom. I think what I'll do is I'm going to dye a pink ribbon in the back of my head. I like it. Boy, you must really be confident that the Warriors are going to win because I can't imagine you with a, a pink <laughs> ponytail. in the. But you know what? In the name of Jeremy Wien's mom, everyone loves and respects Jeremy, and it's unfortunate. But I, it's, it's great that you're showing love and support for a very good cause and, and, and for his mom. You've already shaved your head, but now per this bet, you're willing to go blonde and or pink. Is that how I'm understanding it? Well, no, 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 not blonde. Are you kidding me? I'm going to jump off the stratosphere for this bet. I'm up three to two. I love how you keep trying to put it out there as if Golden State is not leading this series right now. And you know what? I'm bringing the Clippers to the show tomorrow. I think that would be better that we do it on air. Scott Whitney agrees with you. No, Scott Pritchard does not. <laughs> well, my concern is I would be all for that. The only concern I have is I play strictly by the rules all the time and the health department. I don't want to have them come in if we're doing this here. <laughs> well, it's so. a good thing it's not a restaurant. Otherwise, we'd be SOL. But since it's a radio station, I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, yeah, we won't be cooking any breakfast in here, Scott. They might have to do it. I, Anthony, I was trying to tell Scott to work out some kind of deal with you. You know, to, to negotiate it down to, you know, to a Mr. T look or or something. You know, but he, I guess he didn't want to do that. Actually, I'm open, and I mean, I don't concede anything. I really believe talent, a la the Denver Nuggets, will prevail, even though they're on the road. They struggle on the road. They have a road-losing record, and the Warriors are world beaters at home, but they're without David Lee. Anthony, I will say to you, man-to-man, friend-to-friend, you know I respect my money, but I do not want to shave my head, even though it bodes well because the Spurs will be a big fatter, a bigger, fatter favorite against Golden State than they will Denver. So it's in my monetary best interest to have the Warriors win. But two things. One, I don't want to shave my head. And two, I do not. This is the bigger. I do not want to acknowledge that you were right again. Which is well, more important. It is. Well, look, <laughs> the, the, the fact that he's throwing that out there about how 
how upset you are when I'm right is going to make it that much sweeter when I've got the Clippers pressed against that dome, getting rid of that <laughs> first player. I am going I would to... actually, I, I would consider, you know, trying to work something out. But because you just keep throwing in there how you can't believe I'm always right, there's no deal. I can't wait to get rid of that hair. One thing I'll say to you, because, again, I respect my money, and I know that you – I'm telling you, I'm going to make this offer one time. I will not make this offer tomorrow. Today, I will pay you cash. $8 to call this thing off. I don't want to see you in pink highlights and a ponytail. Is it the and price I certainly of a, don't want to shave my head. Is that a price of a great clips haircut or what? <laughs> yeah, where, where does $8 come from? I, I think you can maybe get up to 16 Anthony. Anthony Padilla, eight dollars may not seem like much today, but eight beats zero, which is what we're looking at tomorrow. And plus, you save your hair. You You're don't right. Have to. You're right. Highlights. We are looking at zero tomorrow. We're looking at zero hair remaining on your head when I shave it. So okay. no deal. Seriously, deal. seriously, my Take friend, I, I will say one hundred dollars cash and one hundred dollars cash. One hundred dollars cash. Casino. You don't have to worry about dyeing your hair or doing anything goofy with a pigtail. And I don't have to worry about shaving my head. And we all can continue to root for the Warriors, in or out, $100 cash, in or out. Man, I love that you're sweating this this much. <laughs> I, I think that – I don't think anybody – has, and even uh, Mr. Whitney, who's known you for a number of years, and Jacob there in the studio, I don't think that they've probably ever seen you this scared about anything in your life. I don't think you're this scared of commitment, let alone <laughs> shaving your head. This is insane to watch. But, no, I, those Clippers are coming. I'm bringing them with me tomorrow. They are state-of-the-art, state-of-the-art barber Clippers, and I'm sorry, buddy. I, that's go. fine. I'm, I'm actually ecstatic that you declined You're my $100. I just, A, I saved $100, but it's going to be so much fun when the Nuggets <laughs> come back on Sunday to win, win Game 7, and not only do you have to do the highlights with the blonde and the, the strawberry pigtail, <laughs> all right, you all, or the pink, you <laughs> just gave away $100. So this is going to be so sweet come Saturday. I just have to sweat today. But Saturday, again, cream rises to the top. The Warriors have 57 wins regular season. The Warriors 47. David Lee is out. Have you heard that? David Lee is not playing for the Warriors there, young man? Yeah, you realize he went down in game one. And since then, the, what happened after that? Well, I only remember what happened most recently where the Nuggets won convincingly just two nights Of course, that's you remember. Well, let me remind you, the Warriors are up 3-2, to two, and they were up 3-1. to one. Yes, they lost last game, and uh, here, look, here, here's one thing going into tonight's game that's my only concern, if I have one, and that is that Denver clearly made adjustments for Steph Curry. So th that obviously blindsided uh, Golden State. Now, going into tonight's game, I would hope that Golden State would be better prepared for that and game plan for Denver you know, uh, guarding Steph Curry all night. Um, so if they're able to do that, then I think it's going to be just like game four. The last time they got him with the element of surprise, but I don't see that happening tonight. Anthony, I think that's a great, great point. You're talking about George Carl, 30 years experience compared to Mark Jackson, the coach of the Warriors, who I love, two years experience. But it's all about adjustments. And the Nuggets, yeah, yeah, I get it. They've lost three, four times at home the entire year. They do struggle on the road, but they do seem to have made an adjustment. And I like teams that play good, sound defense and are physical. That's where the Nuggets are today. The Warriors, they're a finesse team. Although, you know, Mark Jackson has been whining and crying. And, Anthony, I want to get your take on this because he's calling out the Nuggets saying that they have hitmen physically hurting some of his players. But I, I tend to disagree because I actually caught part of the game the other night and I was disappointed with uh, Andrew Bogus or Andrew Bogut. I was tired, disappointed with him, and, and I guess that uh, throat checks and kung fu action are okay because no one has been more physical in terms of cheap shots than your Warriors against my victims, the Nuggets. <laughs> victims. Yeah. See, and, and this is what happens when you go from sitting behind a computer watching these games all the time and just watching the numbers to deciding to turn one on for 10 minutes halfway through the second quarter. This is, this is exactly the kind of commentary I would expect. What you didn't see was Fareed tripping Steph Curry as he's running down the lane. Didn't even have the ball, just running down the lane, and somehow, oh, here's my foot. Are you kidding? So what you saw was Bogut retaliating, because obviously Steph Curry can't really bring it against Fareed. He's a big boy. 
uh, and he was just getting his boys back. So that wasn't a, it wasn't a cheap shot. It was a retaliation shot. That's all that was. Well, the retaliation so, always gets punished. That's that's one of the things in sports where always. usually the, the one guy gets away with it. Retaliation always gets caught. But JaVel McGee was the other guy that the adjustment, they brought him into the starting lineup and for a more physical presence against uh, Azili and, and really bothered Bogut as well. I think this bogus or Bogut character is a character. I mean, a few games ago, he was actually calling some guy out, pointing at his chin like, I dare you to hit me in the face. It's like, what kind of a clown is this guy? Bogut. Okay, yeah, but, but you know what? This is, if you'll notice, this is actually starting to come into play in most of these series now. Boston and the Knicks series is starting to heat up like this as well. Uh, you've got the, the Knicks, you know, dressing in all black, basically because they were, they were doing the funeral procession for the Celtics. How foolish was that? I, I, I just want to wrap things up, Anthony Padilla, by saying, uh, first of all, I have the utmost respect for you to call in and, and I, I, to, to put yourself in such a vulnerable position. I mean, two days from now, not only are you <laughs> going to be going with blonde highlights and a pink ponytail, because I, 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 let, I had an opportunity to let you off the hook, and you turned it down, and $100 cash. How are you going to feel on Saturday? Look, I commend you. I commend you for spinning this as if I'm the one that's getting let off the hook. <laughs> but I know you were sweating about to fall out of your seat because it just takes one more victory, and we're just a few hours away from that potentially happening. To me, bringing that set of Clippers to the show tomorrow and that one person in there has your back, and everybody cannot wait to watch that hair come off your head. So you're saying no? <laughs> <laughs> you're declining my offer? Saying, Is that what you're saying? Uh, I am saying we go at 10 o'clock tomorrow. I will be there at 8.30 ready to rock. All right, sounds good. 7.30 tonight, it all tips off. It should be fun. Anthony Padilla, yes, thanks sir. for checking in. Good luck with your show tonight, all right, buddy? All right, buddy. Talk to you guys tomorrow. See you, Anthony. All right, Anthony Padilla, who's... The host was Scott here on Fridays on The Odds Couple. Your bet is coming to a head one way or the other very soon. And Warriors somebody's, taking somebody's, on the Nuggets. Somebody's head very soon. Warriors versus the Nuggets. It's pretty exciting. I mean, forget the uh, little side bet like that's possible that I could forget it. But it's an interesting series, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you have number three against number six. These two teams mirror each other from the standpoint that they like to run and gun. Neither team accused of playing defense, and now they're both whining and complaining because of the physicality of the series. But that's playoff basketball. Well, I think Anthony brings up a good point. And, and, and the Knicks doing, you know, wearing all black, and, and now this series getting more physical with the Nuggets and the Warriors. But that's what happens when professional athletes see each other over and over and over again. They're so competitive. They're, they're, you know, they're alpha males. They want to win. And now you take two teams and say, guess what, guys? You're going to play each other maybe seven times in a, in a two-week stretch or in, in baseball every other day and hockey every other day. And you see See tensions rise and tensions rise. Liberties taken. Things, cheap shots, either per- perceived uh, perceived cheap shots or actual cheap shots uh, taken the wrong way. Coaches start to bark. Now, broadcasters are barking at coaches where the Denver broadcasters calling Mark Jackson classless. So now guys like us on the sidelines are going, yeah, he's a bum. Uh, <laughs> this is what's going on. And pretty soon the popcorn vendors are going to be fighting with the beer vendors. And this is what happens in these series, and that's what makes the playoffs so great, whether it's in uh, in any one of these sports when it comes to these long series. You know, football doesn't get that because we play one game a week. You win and you advance. It's sudden death. But in basketball and hockey and baseball, I've got to beat you three or four times in a short period of time to move on. So, sure. The angst and the uh, anguish gets uh, out of hand. You're listening to The Odds Couple on KSHP AM 1400 Radio, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We're live and worldwide Vegas video network. This is really exciting. You can check us out live, archive the shows. Check it out. I post these on PritchardsPicks.com, my site. I'm also featured on VegasInsider.com. We have a million views per day. Tim Donahue, former NBA official. I'm on his site, Ref picks.com i'm going to have a segment on this show called tuesdays with tim tim donahue will be my guest on a weekly basis a 15 minute segment talking about what goes through the mind of an nba official in not handicapping these games but as far as officiating the games although 
you know, we'll talk. We'll we'll leave it open for discussion with with my good buddy. Well, Tim. We want to talk about that stuff because that will be interesting. It will. Uh, in fact, <laughs> hey, I've talked to him and he talks internationally, and he says a lot of people love hearing about the FBI investigation and the mob ties and this and that. So we'll uh, something tells me we'll delve into that. It will be interesting, and we have another game tonight between Brooklyn and Chicago. Back in Chicago, the Bulls holding a three games to two lead in that series. Uh, the Bulls didn't play very well in Game 5. The Nets played much better at home. Do you, what do you expect out of the Bulls and Nets tonight? What I expect out of the Bulls is to show a lot of grit, a lot of determination, good sound defense. And with New Jersey Nets, they are like the Atlanta Hawks. And we talk about that on a day-to-day basis as well. The Atlanta Hawks destroyed last night against the Indiana Pacers because they refused to defend on the road. They're up, down, inconsistent. I just don't know. I don't respect teams like that. I don't respect the Brooklyn Nets. They're a big, fat favorite against the Bulls in this series, but I'm not buying it. The Bulls are at home. It's game six. You know they're going to bring the energy and the effort. And with the Nets, they have talent. Lopez, Wallace, Dewell. But again, they're inconsistent. I just don't know what I'm going to get with the Nets. So, I mean, at least you know what you're getting with Chicago. Do you like that line uh, from a bull standpoint or a net standpoint sitting at one and a half right now where it is? It's a great question, and I have no opinion on this game because as a professional sports better, you want to find value. Right. And betting sides this late in the season, I don't find much value because there are no secrets. The line is pretty sharp. I will set a line. I mean, just two nights ago when the Nuggets were playing at home, all right, the line was anywhere from seven, seven and a half, eight, and it was it fell right on the number. I'll set a number based on people at my sports betting seminars at Harris will ask me how do you determine the line for a game? Well it's simple. When I come up with the number where I could not bet either side, and that's where what I see with the with the Bulls nets. If you put a gun to my head and said, Scott, pick a winner. I would be on the Bulls at home because I know what I'm getting. I don't know what I'm going to get with the Nets. The Nets could win by 20 if they bring their A game, but more times than not, you just don't know what you're going to get with Brooklyn. No, that's a good point. And then the other game we mentioned, it, it opened Denver. Now the money's moved in significant fashion to Golden State, where now the Warriors are a one-and-a-half point favored. So a big move, about three points in that particular game tonight. Well, again, we know the game's not going to finish in a tie. So right. it's not that big of a move. It's just basically one point, one-and-a-half point either way. But the money has come in on Golden State. I don't know. I mean, I respect – people have asked me for years, what is your favorite team? And I always say, whichever team I have money on. Sure. But the the other answer is my favorite team is H-O-M-E, the home team. But this is playoff basketball. I like talent more than I like the home court. So I think there might be value in – forget the haircut. Forget the, uh, you know, right. the, the crew cut. Is that what we're doing, a crew cut? Whatever you can negotiate. (laughs) Uh, Or the shaved head. Forget that. I feel the Nuggets present value. I'm against the move here, and I'm trying not to bring emotion in. But I really don't want to shave my head. (laughs) I I see value with the Nuggets because they're the better team. They won 57 games. Warriors won 47. Warriors are without David Lee. The Nuggets, better coach, more proven coach. I love Mark Jackson. Two years. But... But George Carl, 30 years, they've made the necessary adjustments. They just proved it. Up 22, they ultimately ended up winning by seven. You have a Chiron underneath you that says you're now a 5-1 to favorite to be bald <laughs> by, uh, by tomorrow. <laughs> well, again, I'm a numbers guy. <laughs> is that a good and, line? And the fact is, that is, a good line, no, it's a terrible line. Okay. That's a terrible line because we already know that the money, if it's a one-and-a-half point, I'm I'm a favorite to be bald tomorrow. Right. But five to one is ridiculous. I'm That's more like much. a buck thirty. Okay. You're minus a buck thirty. 30. Okay. So if we had this conversation twenty three times, thirteen of those twenty three times I would be bald. Right. <laughs> I'm hopeful that uh this falls into the other ten right. chances. And then if we get through tomorrow or tonight I have to sweat on Saturday, but at least I'll be a seven, eight, nine point favorite then. Let me ask you a question about last night's game. The Rockets were a nine point underdog in the game. At halftime, the Rockets led by seven at the break. Halftime line, looking at it, Golden State, I'm sorry, uh, the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, I should say, they were a 
nine-point favorite in the second half. Do you see that as a middling opportunity, or is that something that you don't look at uh, or, or want unless the number is, again, where you need it to be? I look at everything, and I consider everything. No ego involved, no personal opinion involved. Ultimately, I mean, if it's if, if I had, as you know, plus the, the nine points for the Rockets, and I'm up seven at half, and now the second half line is nine Oklahoma City Thunder, there's a big fat middle opportunity there because that's basically a nine-point middle. Instead of being up seven, now if the Thunder win by two, that's that's what we're looking at. They're favored by nine, which right. means that they're favored to win by two in the contest. Two things. One, I have to have a strong opinion, that, but that's counterintuitive. That's to say that I actually don't like my Rockets bet, which is absurd because obviously I like the Rockets. So that's why I bet them, and now I'm up seven, so it's going according to plan. So don't screw up a wet dream. Just roll with it. <laughs> okay. Just go and believe in your ability to handicap. But having said that, if I do have an opinion or there is an injury and I, I see value – well, then, in the fifth, it's nine. Well, the the you said it was nine, but depending upon where you looked, it was eight, nine, and ten. Station Properties actually had ten in that game before they moved it to nine and a half. In the islands, they had eight, minus 15, minus 20 cents. So, again, to answer your question, if I'm getting the best of it, in other words, you would be on the Thunder minus eight, or you would be on the Rockets plus ten. So now, instead of a nine-point middle, you have a ten-point middle from... Minus seven to plus three. Gotcha. See? So, again, have to have a strong opinion and be all to always have to get the best of it. So, if, as a, a nine, I would not take plus or minus nine. There's no value. Why would I take plus nine when I could have plus ten? Or why would I lay nine when I could have laid eight? But the average better doesn't have the ability necessarily to shop around. It's halftime. They have an account with this place or they have an account with that place. And that's where the, the vast majority of the square betters uh, just – primarily bet at their local casino so i understand you're all about shopping but for some of us we, we they don't have that ability to do that well then and that's a, that's a very fair assessment because i understand a lot of people bet for action or they bet for entertainment or they have a life or they have a career they have a job right. they have more to do than what i do hang out at home in my office and dissect numbers all day every day. it's not very sexy but long term it's been profitable so to to address that question then i would say to probably maybe a little bit because you put yourself in a very advantageous position to where how many bets are you going to make where you open yourself up to have a seven, eight, nine point middle right. opportunity. But then it goes back to how do you really think it's going to play out? Do you really think Oklahoma City is going to come back and win the game? And if so, well, you're basically laying two for the game because the second half line that you right. told me about was nine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that would make sense. Put, always put yourself in favorable positions. But the, the, the downside to that is believe in your ability to handicap and don't give a copper penny away. I mean, right. you're, you're not necessarily giving anything away, but you are opening yourself up for, for a nice middle to where you win both sides of the bet. Sportsbooks hate that, put you in a favorable position. But me, as a professional, I would only do that if I was getting plus 10, the only 10. Right. But for everyone else... It's your money. Or the, or the only eight on the, on the other side. Right. right. Eight minus 15. So we're going to keep things moving. We do have a big game. Don't know if you've heard in Oakland tonight, the Golden State Warriors. We haven't talked about it. Are taking now, what, on. What does that say? That says shave, nuggets, buzz, nuggets, <laughs> baldy, nuggets, buzz cut, nuggets, shave me, nuggets. Uh, hang on. Does that say buzz, shave, nuggets? I love it. That's awesome. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting, isn't it? If it, it should fall on Baldy or Shave Me, I have to make an argument for the Warriors. So I'm hoping it falls on the Nuggets. I see that as a good omen. This is the part of the show we do spin to win where we are forced to argue for either team because a smart better bets with their head, never their heart. Emotions. Not with their hair. <laughs> they with their head. Emotions cloud judgment. This is spin to win. The Golden State Warriors are at home taking on the Denver Nuggets. The Warriors oh. are favored by hey. one. I guess I'm going to make an argument. We've got to show everybody again I'm going to make an argument for well, it the. It moved one. It moved one. You have to go. It was shave. It's on shave. Yeah, there you go. Put it right there. I'm there going to go. make an argument as to why the Golden State Warriors are the side to go with tonight. Golden State minus one. It, the only thing you need to know is I like the Nuggets. So that's <laughs> why there is value with the Warriors. I need the Nuggets to win to keep my hair. That's why the Warriors will win. 
The Warriors will win because Anthony Padilla, who doesn't have a clue about sports betting, but he can't lose. He likes the Warriors. Warriors minus one, it's a bargain. See the cashier. I have to defend your honor. I get the Nuggets, who are trying to survive. Talent over shaving of the head. Uh, you know. I'm not sure which way I'm rooting. I got to be honest with you. I, have, you know, I, I feel for you, but I kind of want to see the spectacle of you giving your head shaved as well. And Anthony might be right. You might be on that island all by yourself. You're on Revis Island, with 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 nobody defending you. Obviously, Nuggets with their backs to the wall. They got the win they needed in Game Five to keep the series alive. We've seen teams come back from three-one deficits. It's not unprecedented. The thing I worry about is George Carl. Can he make the in-game decisions to make the right moves? in the third and fourth quarter in a very hostile environment in Oakland. Uh, and you got to worry about the best player on the floor in, in Seth Curry of lighting you up uh, in keeping that crowd in there. Denver's got to get the lead, get the lead early, and, and play very well. And they've got to continue to go to the basket. That's If they settle for jump shots, they're in trouble. If not, they can win the game. And with a short line like that, uh, the Nuggets have a very big shot tonight. Golden State Warriors minus one at home. We know Steph Curry is going to get to the free throw line. Last game in Denver, Steph Curry played 42 minutes, did not attempt a free throw. I guess that's what happens when you don't ever go to the basket and you're a finesse player. It's now a physical series. He has home cooking, home court on his side. The refs in their back pocket because no one wants to go against the Oakland crowd. That's true. So the refs get that guy with the spikes all over him, you know, that Raider guy. But to yeah. get to the free throw line, you have to go to the basket. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced a finesse team like the Warriors have the courage to do so. I'd be willing to wager that he'll have at least a free throw tonight. I would be willing to wager that's a safe bet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to The Odds Couple on KSHP and Vegas Video Network. We'll be right back. Have you ever thought you should be on the radio? Or have you considered doing an online video show or podcast? If so, now is your only chance to do both at the same time. KSHP and the Vegas Video Network have teamed up to provide the only multi-camera broadcast quality video and live radio simulcast in Las Vegas. And instead of having your show played at some ungodly hour, the KSHP Vegas Video Network partnership is producing shows that play from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Imagine having your own radio show broadcasting to the entire Las Vegas Valley and combine that with an online presence that is viewed in all 50 states and 150 countries, both live and on demand. This is a first and an outstanding opportunity to give voice to your business, your ideas, and your talent. If you'd like your own show on KSHP and the Vegas Video Network, contact us today at 221-1200. That's 221-1200. Welcome back to The Odds Couple on KSHP AM 1400 radios, live and worldwide simulcast on Vegas Video Network. My name is Scott Pritchard. I'm a professional sports better handicapper, joined, as always, by Brett Grant. We would love for you to reach out to us on The Odds Couple. Email us at oddscouple at vegasvideonetwork.com. That's oddscouple at vegasvideonetwork.com. Also, we would love to hear your voice on our show. Simply go to Vegas Video Network. On the right-hand side, a red bar. Hit that. In the middle of the page, a green bar. Hit Start Recording. We do field live chat questions. We also have the studio line open, 702 702- 221-7283. That's 702-221-7283. Now, if you do miss us live, no worries. Reach out to us. Vegas Video Network, iTunes, YouTube, Roku. We're talking sports, sports betting. You don't have to look far to find frustration. Are you kidding me? Well, my, mine's more of are you kidding me with the effort last night by Kevin Garnett. I mean, absolutely phenomenal what he was doing last night. 16 points, 18 rebounds. The last three games against the New York Knicks, Kevin Garnett has had 52 
rebounds in those three games, 17, 17, and 18. And it's no wonder why the Boston Celtics have put themselves back into a position in this series with a chance to force, uh, obviously, they'll play game six, a chance to force a game seven back in New York. I saw Kevin Garnett. I used to cover Kevin Garnett when he was in high school at Farragut High School in Chicago, and he was a man among boys. He had transferred in from, I believe, South Carolina. His mother moved with the family, and he went to Farragut, and he was a man-child. And you said, wow, this kid's a great player. And all the guys who then skipped going from college to go to the NBA can thank Kevin Garnett because he was the first one in a long time that took that leap and said, you know what, I'm not going to college. I'm good enough to go into the NBA. And now at age 36, to continue to still do what he's doing, and and obviously the heart of a warrior and the heart of a champion, and you really have to applaud the effort last night and in the last three games of the series where the, where the Celtics have been much more competitive, uh, winning two of those three games for him to get to the glass and play the way he does. I think it's just an are-you-kidding-me kind of effort from Kevin Garnett. We should see that kind of effort from everybody every night on the floor. No doubt about it. I mean, Kevin Garnett, we've often heard, well, Rudy Tomjanovich, the outstanding coach for the Houston Rockets, years ago coined the phrase, never underestimate the heart of a champion. And well said here, Brett. I mean, this guy is a champion. No no question about it. And I'd love to see the Celtics come back and beat the Knicks. I am not a New York sports fan, and I know there's lots of them that are listening. And I'm not a Boston sports fan, but I'm a Kevin Garnett guy. And, and, I, and I just think he's one of those guys – that is a treasure in the in the NBA from the standpoint of what he brings you every night. He's gritty. He's hardworking. He's he's very quiet. He's not an egomaniac. Um, he doesn't play up to the media. He's very professional. Sure, he gets in little skirmishes and might play a little more physical in times than other guys do. But he's not about me. He's about his team and about winning, and that's to be applauded. I love Kevin Garnett because I've watched the guy for years. I've never seen the guy take a play off. He always he brings it. You're right. He doesn't. And, you know, 18 rebounds last night. 16 of those 18, by the way, on the defensive glass. So they, they were huge rebounds from the standpoint of taking a game that was a six-point win on the road and denying the other team offensive extra possessions offensively. That's, that's, that's huge. Brett talked about, are you kidding me, Kevin Garnett, how outstanding he was and how outstanding he's been his entire career. Now, my, my are you kidding me segment has to do with the other side of that, a la clueless Kevin. Kevin Martin, Kevin Martin, are you kidding me? This guy used to be a good player for the Sacramento Kings. Well, I used to be thin. He used to be when I was seven. Lots of hair. (laughs) (laughs) Clueless Kevin Martin. An opportunity for him to man up, step up, and have the fans of Oklahoma City forget about the trade for Kevin for James Harden. Instead, what does he do? Oh, for nine on his home court. Over nine, he finally made a shot. One for ten. He's like, okay, I'm done. I've had enough. One for ten. Kevin Martin, are you kidding me? It wasn't a good night for him, that's for sure. And, you know, we talked about this earlier. The irony here is here's James Harden, who goes out and just lights up the team in Oklahoma City yesterday. You traded James Harden, who we all think, even at the time, is a without question a better player than Kevin Martin. Kevin Martin was the guy who came back from Houston in the trade for James Harden. And now the irony that James Harden has forced game six in this series and Oklahoma City without Russell Westbrook is going to be in a position probably in game seven as the number one overall seed to try and avoid a monstrous upset at the hands of their former mate in James Harden. Very exciting time of the year. We have Major League Baseball every day, NBA playoffs every day. Scott Pritchard alongside Brett Grant. Together, we are the Odds Couple on KSHP AM 1400 Radio, live and worldwide simulcast on Vegas Video Network. We're here Monday through Friday from 10A to 11A. Excited because this is the part of the show where Brett and I together put money into your pocket as we put you on the right side. Back with you here on the right side. I'm going to go to a baseball game today, and that's going to be the uh, Chicago White Sox taking on the Texas Rangers today. Jake Peavy uh, on the mound today for the uh, Chicago White Sox. He's been very, very good in his career in the month of May, and we're going to ride that today in an underdog spot for for Jake Peavy uh, as he's been 11-4 in the last 
several years in his career. And the interesting thing about Jake, that's 11 and four in the month of May in his career. And the interesting thing about PV, he's no longer that hard throwing right-hander that was with the Padres. He's now in that later stage of his career where he's figured out he's, he's locating the ball much better. He's, he's keeping the fly ball rate down. He's not walking guys. He's keeping his team in the game. And I think when you're getting PV in a, in a spot here with a, a, a White Sox team, I think that's playing pretty well uh, as an underdog. I like the White Sox plus the 115-116 today in Texas. I always like listening to Brett Grant because it would be easy if we're documenting the plays to always take favorites. He doesn't do that. He's on a dog again today. May, I mean, plus 16 cents. Peavy, the White Sox, certainly looked good last night, the White Sox against the Texas Rangers. But let's recap, if you don't mind, how yes. you did yesterday. <laughs> I had the uh, the over in the hockey game between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the New York Islanders, over five and a half. It was 5 nothing Pittsburgh with seven minutes to go in the second period. 27 minutes left to go in the game. I just need one more goal. And the Islanders decided not to participate in the goal in the game yesterday, and the game ended up five nothing. So it was my first loss of the week. I'm two and one on the week. That's not too bad, right? That's great. Ab- okay. As sixty seven percent is world class in kicking butt. I look at what you've done. Okay, good right. job. I mean, you talk about twenty seven minutes. You needed one goal one time. I can relate because two nights ago, yeah. Twins Tigers over seven and a half. It's six one in the bottom of the fifth, and I have. I don't know, 69 minutes to go in the game, and I could not get one run one time. But good news. Bounce back yesterday, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Why? How do these sports books stay open? <laughs> it's true. The the boy, it's it's good to be cocky when we win. We, we <laughs> haven't been on the same side winning or losing yet together. We're always one and one. Somebody we're, wins, somebody loses. It's well, we're giving new meaning to the term zigzag. Okay. There you are. Well, yesterday I liked the Houston Rockets plus the eight and a half, nine points. They were at Oklahoma City. They won the game straight up. That was nice. I would have been a real genius had I said, get on the Rockets plus 450 on the money line. But yesterday we talk about every day. Underdogs are oftentimes undervalued. Two big fat dogs yesterday plus 450 plus 480 with the Celtics and with the Rockets last night. Okay, yesterday games, they're history. Today's games are a mystery. Let's get to it. Boston Red Sox on the road taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. Interesting pitching matchup here. The total for the game is 9 under 15. You have Dempster taking on Hap. And if you look at, forget the ERAs and forget the win-loss. 1-2 versus 2-1. The ERA, who cares? It's really about when handicapping pitchers, you look at the whip factor, walks, hits per innings pitch. They're both just over 1. Dempster, 1.13. And Hap, he comes in at one point. Two, five. The right side for me in betting this total, Toronto at home against Boston, I like the under nine. We talked before in the National League, seven is a key total. American League, nine is a key total. Hockey, we all know it's five. Pro football, we know it's 37. Instead of paying length, 10 cents, you have to lay an extra 5 cents, but I see value there under 9, minus the 15. Ring up the ringer, see the cashier. Well, Ryan Dempster's been pretty good, and his sinker's really been an effective pitch for him so far going in. The interesting thing about the game from a side standpoint is that the Red Sox uh, playing very well right now. They are a, a pretty decent favorite in this game. I think laying about a dollar twenty-seven last time I checked uh, in Toronto. And this is, a, of course... An interesting story with the Blue Jays, Scott. They were the team that went out and spent all the money. Everybody thought the Blue Jays were going to run away with the American League East. Hasn't uh, been that way so far for the first month of the season. Well, they are basically the Miami Marlins from a year ago. Everyone thought that team would do what they did. Most of their players ultimately ended up in Toronto, Toronto, and they're basically playing like the Marlins did from a year ago. I want to talk about – I'm big on total, so I want to talk about trends on over-unders up to this and streaks up to this point. Uh, The last five games, the Baltimore Orioles have gone over the total. The Pittsburgh Pirates, eight consecutive overs. The Tampa Bay Rays, five consecutive overs. Unders, one team. Minnesota Twins riding a four-game under streak. Overall, wins, losses, we document anyone who has won or lost more than three games. Currently, the Cleveland Indians have been hot. They've won four consecutive games. Yesterday, seven home runs. Yeah, they were swinging the bats really well yesterday in a, in a dominating performance. Interesting thing to note, the Angels with a win yesterday over Oakland. Those two teams have played each other six times this year. All six games have gone over the total. We talk about it every day, how the A's have been a dead-over team, and we know the Angels with their 
average pitching staff on their best day and the fact that they can hit with anyone one through nine it's amazing you want to ride the streak and the reason you ride the streak ride the wave is because you can only lose one time and you can win three four eight ten times in a row a's dead over angels have been an an over team so when those two teams collide even though it's going to start to reflect that now play the over for brett grant i'm scott pritchard together we're the odds couple